All right, so let's talk about the range rule of thumb. So we're in 3.2. 3.2 is all about variation, like how much things vary. We've been talking about standard deviation. I'll explain more as we go, then we'll do, some, we'll do the homework like usual. So first off, range rule of thumb is a crude but simple tool. Basically, it says 95% of data values lie within two standard deviations. Let me show you what that means um, here. Yeah, so that yeah, probably looks funny, all that. Do they have a bell curve? I guess not. All right, let's, um, let's talk about this. So, um, okay, so what is all that? You don't really need to know all that symbolism right now. Don't worry about it. I'll show you when we get to the homework. That's what really matters. Later you will. You'll know that basically is a fancy way of saying the average. It's mu. It's a Greek letter, whatever. You don't need to know all that right now. But, but what's important is say you're measuring anything in the real world. Say you're measuring, what did we do last time? Men's shoe sizes, right? There's some average men's shoe size. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, um, is it nine? All right. Wait, I need to, uh, oh, I need to copy. What's the problem I'm having here? Uh, maybe, uh, oh, wait. Well, not right. Let me see. I'm having technical difficulties tonight. My uh, my Apple Pencil broke in the tip. Anyway, I got tips at home, but I don't have tips on me. So in the last lecture, so I'm hoping I can like hold it and piece it together and hold it with my finger and sort of scribble. But my hopes are being dashed as we speak. I'm gonna have to write on the board. So, uh, which is not the end of the world. The lecture just won't be captured. All right. Well, yeah, I'm just going to have to write on the board and talk. All right, I guess. I, man, am I doing something wrong here? So, um, okay. So there'd be some average whatever shoe size. Let's say nine. So that'd be right in the middle, whatever. I don't know if that's really right or not. And then there would be some variation, right? Not everybody smack on the average. Some people have bigger feet, smaller feet. I mean, have bigger feet, smaller feet. So um, how much... Um, Oh, boy, I really got to hold it tight. Okay, so the average, so that's what that symbol is. That means average, that little weird, it's a Greek mu. It's called mu. It's a Greek u kind of thing. Anyway, whatever, that's the, that's the average. And then the little, the little squiggle, that is standard deviation. My rule with all food is it's quiet food. Food is fine as long as it's quiet food. Bananas are highly recommended. Standard deviation. Quiet, please, with the food. Standard deviation. That's the amount that... Do, do anybody remember? What is standard deviation? We talked about it a little bit briefly. What is standard deviation? What chapter was it? 3.2. <laughs> Yeah, this is 3.2. Want me to put that up there again? Yeah, this is section 3. Point, sorry, I'm just going to have to hold this tip. 3.2. We're in section. Come on. It really, it really needs the tip. It's really not happy. 3.2. All right, that's my second tip. 3.2. We're in section 3.2. So a standard deviation. Remember, I talked about, that's right, I did. I talked about social deviant, right? Just trying to give you something real to claim. What's a social deviant? Someone whose behavior is off the normal, right? Deviates from the normal. So, he's, so, so in the same way, deviation means off the normal, off the middle. Standard deviation means average amount off the middle, right? So that, that's what the words... I want to give you a feel. That's almost more important than the button pushing. I mean, we'll, we'll do the button pushing... But real life, probably the most valuable thing to you is, is, is a feel of standard deviation because you'll read a report uh, at some point that says, you know, in your life probably it says standard deviation. What is that thing? It's average distance from the middle. Does that make sense? So, so for men's heights, let's get back to men's heights. Average, we're just making it up here. And maybe the average men's shoe size, I mean shoe size is nine. And the standard deviation is like um, two. I don't know, I'm just making it up. So that means not every man has exactly a nine, size nine shoe. Some have bigger, some have smaller. Some have way bigger, some have a little bigger. Some have way smaller, some have a little smaller. 
Okay? So if 2 is the standard deviation, that's the average distance from the average, from the middle. Does that make sense? So the average person is off the middle by 2. Now, not everybody's off the middle by 2. Some are way above the middle. Some are way below the middle. Like, you know, 4 or 5 shoe sizes below the middle. Some are really close to the middle. They're 8.5. Some are just above the middle. But on average, the average person is 2 off the middle. Does that make, us, make sense? What's, you get the feel? For what standard deviation means. Average distance from the middle. Standard deviation. Okay, so what? Well, that would mean um, 11. Mm, I just lost the tip again. Sorry. It's going to be a... It's going to be a slow-moving night. I, I won't go too fast tonight. That's for sure not going to happen. Um, okay, so 11. So I just went up by 2. And then up by 2 again, I'd be at 13. What am I doing? I'm doing standard deviation jumps. You think it'll work? Well, maybe I could just draw a thank you. Let me see, Let me see if it'll work. Maybe I can do something like that. Will it work in the back there? Let's see. So, yeah, it's working. Thank you. All right, and then, whoop, and I just did something crazy on my end. Anybody didn't show anything on your end? Great. All right, so then, um, and then minus 2 would be 7, and minus 2 would be 5. Okay, so what, what am I saying? Thank you, that's working a little bit better. What am I saying about those numbers? I'm not right here. Let me try to improve my writing here. And then another jump up to the 13. Right there's the 13. Right there's the 5. See how this is middle plus 2 standard deviation? This here would be middle. Come on. Would be middle plus 1 sigma. And this would be middle minus one sigma. Okay, and this is middle. All right, are you getting the idea of what this diagram is showing? So for men's shoe sizes, and we can pick anything, there's some average, right? And then there's a standard amount off of the average bigger shoes, 11, then 13, and going down 7, and then 5. Well, here's the deal. It turns out that... Only 5%, that's what they're showing on this diagram. Do they, do they show that? Well, they don't say the percentage. In a minute, they're going to say 5% are significantly high or low. These two categories together make 5% of all men, which means the middle, it makes 90 95 percent. Can you read that? Sorry, that's kind of bad. 95 percent. You getting the idea? This is what we're going to talk a lot about this, really throughout the whole course, but just beginning tonight about being average and being significantly high or significantly low. So, 95%, if this really is the average men's shoe size, I don't know where you go on Google and find it, this really is the average men's shoe size, and two really is the typical amount people are off the middle, then two jumps above that, two jumps of two, two <coughs> standard deviation jumps. You see, why, I'm, why am I adding two, adding two? Because that's what I supposed was the standard, typical amount people are off the middle. We can find out. You may have Google. Just go on Google and say, average men's shoe size in America, for example. You get the average. And, and then standard deviation. Anyway, we don't really care what it is. But um, <laughs> whatever it is, you could go up by two, up by two. That's two standard deviation jumps above the middle, two standard deviation jumps below the middle. In other words, if you're average, you have a nine shoe size. If you're up at 11, you're... You're, you're, you got bigger feet than average, but not crazy, not crazy. You know, you're just one typical amount bigger than average. Or if you're down at seven, you're just one typical amount smaller than average. If you're way up at 13, you're two standard jumps above average. You're, you're starting to get significantly big feet. Or 
going down, significant five and below, significantly small feet. Why? Because you're way off the normal. Very few people have feet that big or that small. In fact, 5%. Each of these will be 2.5%, totaling 5%. 95% will be in the middle. That makes sense? We're going to talk about that a lot. For all kinds of things, not just men's shoe size. That could be anything. That could be out in there, you know, the, the, we grab some leaves off the trees and say the average weight of the leaves. There'd be some average weight, there'd be some bigger, some smaller, and there'd be, you know, same kind of spread. And that's, um, and did we talk about that? Bell curve, yeah, we'll do that later. Let's move on. All right, so variance. Let's talk about variance. All, you don't need to worry about all that stuff. Here's all you really need to know. Variance is standard deviation squared. I'll show you. When we do the homework, we'll crank out a million of them. You'll know it quite well. It's just standard deviation squared. That's all it is. So I'll write it out for you as we get to the homework. All right. Um, and there's the summary. We don't need all that. All right. Oh, good. Empirical rule for data with bell-shaped curve. Yeah, 68, 95, 99.7. Let me show you. Yeah, good. There's the bell curve. All right, so this is the best. This really gives the story here. So we have the bell curve. Notice on the bottom, and I'll be showing this a lot throughout the course, there's some X bar that's another way to say average. Are you getting used to, a little bit used to the statistics notation? When they, when they put a bar on X like that, that means, oops, come on. That means average. So that is the average whatever you're measuring. Could be men's shoe size, could be average weight of leaves on the tree, average size of whatever, you know, snails out in the grass. Whatever you want to pick. And then there would be X bar plus S. Now S is another way. A minute ago we used sigma. It's basically the same thing. Don't worry about the difference right now. It's the same thing. S here is standing for standard deviation jump. Notice what we would get. See this 95% here? Notice how that's, here's the middle. That's how many jumps above and below the middle. One, two, two, come on, two, and one, two. See how it's the same story, it's just more detail? They're saying all of this is 95%. It's all you really need to know for now. We'll get into way more detail slowly over time in the months to come. But we, and I've mentioned it briefly before, right, that all kinds of things in life are bell curved. No, they call this normally distributed because this is normally how things happen, right? So like you're talking about men's shoes. Says most men, you know, it, it's got a big pile in the middle. Most men are going to be in the middle. They're going to be having whatever average shoe, shoe size is. And fewer and fewer have really big feet or really small feet. Make a general sense? They use the word significantly, significantly different when you're more than two jumps above or two jumps below the middle. That's, by the way, that's technically what it means. Well, you, you know how they say um, grade on the curve? You've heard of that saying, right? Grade on the curve. I used to be a little bit more snarky in my younger years. And um, when students would say to me, Mr. Heron, are you going to grade that test on the curve? You know, I would say back to them, you don't want me to grade on the curve. And I was really just probably flaunting my knowledge or something. You know, I was just teasing them <laughs> or whatever. But I would say to them, you know, you don't want me to grade on the curve. And then I'd go, what do you mean you don't want me to grade on the curve? And then, so every now and then I would explain what grading on the curve really means. I know they just meant, Mr. Heron, would you add some points? But, um, but, but really grading on a curve, like they do in the UC system. Like if you go to the U UCs are pretty competitive. Like UCLA, UC Berkeley, those kind of places, they're pretty competitive. What they do, I remember I had a buddy that went to junior college with me um, years and years ago. And then he went away. He kind of left before us. And he, went, he got into Berkeley out of um, our junior college. And um, he came back one semester later. And he said it was crazy there. He said, I was in this big physics class, and he said they passed out some exam, the first exam. It was crazy hard. I can only finish, he said, like just a couple problems, and like the average in the class was like 35% on the, on the exam, but they curved it, 
And so, you know, some people got A's and B's. Well, here's, here's what they mean by curve. What, so in those really hard schools, those UCs, what they do is they just write crazy hard exams. Basically, everybody fails it in those giant lecture halls. But then they just grade on a curve, meaning you just end up competing with each other. So if you're the top whatever percent, even if you only got 38% on the thing, you get an A. And if you're average, you get a C. And if you're way below average, then you get the D's and the F's. It doesn't really matter what percentage you got. It's just how you did compared to other people. Specifically, they mean this bell curve. And so they would make grades in these first two categories, C. So here, let me kind of scribble all over the thing. So they would, what they would, this is, this is exactly what it means, grading curve. They would say, people, people, it won't, there we go. <laughs> I'm repeating myself. The people in those zones, because here's the middle, right? Here's the average. So people within one standard jump of the middle would all get C's. And so people here would get B's. People here would get A's. People here would get D's. And anybody below this would get an F. So um, what would that be? If you had a class, say, of 100 people, then notice 68% are here. That would mean, well, 34 and 34. 68 people would get C's. Out of 100, this is what? 13, I, can, I don't even need, you can just look at those numbers. 13 points, so 13 or 14 people would get Bs. Two people would get As. 13 or 14 would get Ds. Only two would get Fs. It would all just be compared if you did better or worse than your peers. So that's how they grade sometimes, not always, but sometimes at the UC, the UC schools. You see Berkeley, you see LA, those big competitive. A lot of times because they're feeding for med school, and so they want to know who's the best because the big med schools want to let in the super high achievers for their doctor program. So anyway, um, I remember I had a buddy, he went to UC that I taught with for a long, like 10 years, and he went to UC Davis, and he said, yeah, they graded on a curve there. He said, there'd be like 30 people in, in a smaller class, he said, and the teacher would say at the beginning of class, there will be one A in this class. One person's going to get an A. They would just determine it right in the beginning. That's, great. That's what grading on a curve really means. The highest person will get the A. doesn't matter if, what people do on the percentage. That's the excelling person. And, you know, my buddy was like, you know, it's never you. There's always some genius person <laughs> there, and, and you're never going to say, so you just never get an A. You just never get an A. Anyway, that was his experience of UC Davis. So anyway, that's what grading on a curve really means. They put everybody in a bell curve, and they just make them compete. So that's what I always meant when I said to them, you don't want me to grade on the curve. There's a lot of Cs. At least a lot of people pass. But um, not a lot of A's and B's. All right. So we're going to use that. The main thing, all we need to know for now is the 95% um, are these chunks in the middle. So the A's and the F's are the extremely high and low. That's 5% of the crowd. That makes sense? So that's, those are the numbers we'll use. IQ scores have a bell-shaped distribution with a mean of 100. I guess that mean, mean is average, right? So I guess that's the average IQ score. Standard deviation is 15. So what percentage of IQ scores are between 70 and 130? What are they talking about? Well, if you imagine, if you imagine the standard normal curve, what, what is the middle? What did they say the middle was? 100. So if I put that right here in the middle, if I say, okay, 100 is the middle. So imagine, imagine you know, the bell curve here. So what is one jump and two jumps above the middle? And what is one jump and two jumps below the middle? How big are the jumps? What do I mean by jumps? 15. I mean the standard deviation jumps, exactly. That means the typical person, the average person has an IQ of 100, but not everybody's average. Some people are higher and lower. By how much? Well, the average person is off the middle by 15. Maybe they're at 115 if they've got a higher IQ than average, or 85 if they've got a lower IQ than average. That's still just pretty average. That You see what that means? So that would, this one would be 115. All I did was I added 15, and then this one would be 130. Oops, I'll work in here. Add, just add in... <laughs> Just add another 15, and then this will be subtract 15, subtract 15. So between here 
and here would be what percentage? Well, all these together makes 95% for all these together. That's all we need to know for now. We'll get into the more detail 68 and stuff later. But for now, all they're going to require us to know in this section is if you take the middle, which they'll give you, and you take the typical amount people are off the middle, standard deviation, and you jump up twice, and then you subtract that twice, so 100, add 15, add 15, and 100, subtract 15, subtract 15. That means between 70, what that means, 95% of all people have an IQ between 70 and 130. People outside of that, big, higher than 130 or lower than 70, are only 5% of the population. They're significantly <coughs> higher or low. Does that make sense? This can work for any kind of information. Could be, you know, like I said, leaves out there. We're doing IQs here. So that's that. They're going to they're gonna just keep going with that idea. So any, anything above one. So what's their question? And what percentage are between? That's, that's where they came up with the 70 and the 130. What percentage? Answer is 95%. All right. Let's keep going. Yeah, there they are. They're doing the whole thing. All right, comparing variation of different populations. Yeah, there's going to be one more thing called the coefficient of variation. We will calculate this. I'll write it out when we get to the homework again. Basically, it's how many averages. You take the standard deviation, you divide by the average, and you multiply by 100. And don't worry about this. I'll show, when we get to a homework problem, I'll write it out again. I'll show you exactly what it means. It'll make a lot more sense in the context of a real-life situation. And that's it, right? Yep, that's it. Let's dive in. Homework time. All right, so let's do our homework. 3.2, measures of variation. Question number one. Listed below are the top 10 annual salaries. Millions of dollars, TV personalities. Find the range, variance, and standard deviation for the sample data. Given that these are the top 10 salaries, do we know anything about the variation of salaries of TV personalities in general. Okay, so first off, there's the, there's the top 10 salaries for TV personalities. What do they want? They want the range, first off. How do you find the range? It's been a while. It's been a, almost a week. Yeah, high minus low. Range is high minus low. Yeah, so let's start with that. I don't know. I'll write it down here. So range, and that one's pretty simple. That's just high minus low. So what's the highest score, or high score, or highest number in that data? 41. Yeah, I guess it's the 41, huh? So 41 minus, what's the low? It's, well, I guess they just go in order. Do they go in order? Yeah, they do. So I don't need to guess. I kept thinking they were trying to trick me. All right, so whatever that, somebody got that? 27.4, thank you. So there's the range, just high minus low, just what's the spread? Right, what's the range? That's the first one. Second question, what's the variance? And third question, what's the standard deviation? Let's figure out the standard deviation first, actually. Let's jump down and do this one first. And then once we have that, all you'll have to do is hit the square button on your calculator, and that'll be the variance. That's the only difference. I'll show you. We'll do it. So let's find the standard deviation for that whole group of numbers. That means the average distance from the middle. Now, I gave you two ways to do it last time. It's way easier if you have the TI. Sometimes some people, more people have the TI tonight. So I'll write the TI instructions up again. We'll do that, but I'll also show the by hand way. Um, I don't remember the by hand way, though. So I'll need to uh, go back and find it. It was back here somewhere. There it is. Yeah, this was the by hand way. So let me write that up for you. That's a big, ugly, terrible formula. S equals, so this is, this is standard deviation uh, by chief calculator. <laughs> um, and so that would be, what is it? Oh, it's right there, huh? So it's the square root of n times the sum of x. Remember that symbol means add up, add up the x squares? Minus, add up the x's and then square it all over n times n minus 1. Yeah, so there's, there it is. There's that way. Let's go back to our homework problem. Here we are. All right. On our calculators, I guess is the only way we're going to do it. 
So on our calculator, the standard deviation, so the SD, the standard deviation, came out to be on our calculator. What is it? One. Here, let me, let me go back. So it's um, 11.26. But yeah, let me point this out. Now, ele if you take 11.26, I don't want you guys to have a frustrating experience on your Math Excel homework. If you just take 11.26, and, now we, and that, that goes on the standard deviation line right here, 11.26, okay? If you, and then I told you the variance is found by the variance right here, just squaring that number, multiplying that number by itself, right? But the problem is, if you just take that 11.26 right now and multiply it by itself, you're, you're rounding prematurely. In other words, if you use a rounded number to form another number, it'll throw the final one off a bit. Make sense? So what that means is if, you're, if your goal on the final answer, variance, is two places. See how they say they want the final variance to two places? That means you got to use more than two places, like four places would be a safe bet beforehand. So use 11.2632 and multiply that by itself. You see what I'm saying? Use more accuracy along the way, and then your final answer will be accurate where you need it to be. So that's what we do. So I'm going to do that with you. So 11.2632. Three, two, and you can just hit the X squared button over on the left side. There's an X squared button. Just 11.2632 X squared. And it'll square it for you. And I just hit the wrong button. <laughs> hit the X squared button. And enter. And I'm getting 126.859. So how do I round to two places? You got 126.7. 126.859. I got 126.7876. Did I? Uh, anybody else get what I got? Yes. Yeah, go to the two, three. Okay, look back. You might have typed in a. So you got to do more. So, so see how I used more? I didn't just stop at 26. I did 11.2632. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So you got to use more accuracy because the final goal. So whenever, whenever you're using a rounded number, to do something else, use more spots than you need in the end. Does that make sense? In the end, they want me accurate to two places. See how they say round to two places? So that means all intermediate results must have more than two places of accuracy. Well, the homework, like, when I did it, I just put, like, the 11.26 or whatever number it gave me. Which, um, for instance, on this one, I put, I put the standard deviation was 10.25, and I squared that so that... Yeah, and, I, and that's why I'm saying that won't that won't be accurate. No, it actually counted it when I rounded it. I said 10.25 squared, which gave me 105.6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the only thing every is every now and then it'll come out, but it won't be reliable. Is this making sense? Yeah, every now and then you'll get lucky. It'll be okay. But see, on this one, if you took 11.26 times 11.26, it wouldn't round to 126.86. This would be an example of one that wouldn't. So is that idea making sense? So if you need two places of accuracy in the end, you've got to use more accuracy than that along the way. Because, right? Because if you round to only two places and then use a two-place rounded number, then the final thing is less accurate than that. If you use something, right? You've got to use more accuracy than you need in the end along the way. So 126.8, the 859 should round to 86, 126.86. Is that good? Is that making sense? So if you want two places in the end, use three, use four. Use four places of, of decimal along the way. All right, we good with that? Um, let me make sure. Is that the answer they had? 11, uh, 126 point. All right, so um, their final question is, is the standard deviation a good estimate? This is just like real life. I think no, because these are the top. These, are, these aren't the average TV people. These are the top 10 TV people. So is that a good estimation of how all TV personalities in general? No. 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 Because, there it's A, because it's not representative of the whole population. 
Is that okay? We good? So, good with everything but the by hand, huh? Let's go to number two. All right, so this is the same thing. I don't know if um, we want to do that entire thing. It's going to be the same thing again. Well, maybe it'll be quick. All right. So this is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to skip this one. <laughs> so this is that one we did before. We're doing all the same questions basically before, but now we're calculating variance instead of, or standard deviation instead of average or mean. See the difference? This making sense. Well, this is the one where you do the, the one for smooth yellow, the two for smooth green. Remember that problem from, from last Wednesday? But last Wednesday, we found the middle. Now we're finding the deviation. See the difference? 3.1, the homework you just did, that was all about finding the middle of a group of numbers. Now we're into finding the standard deviation, how much deviation there is in a group of numbers. That's a different thing. So anyway, so they're going to have you do all the same stuff again. I'm going to move on. Number three here. So now we're doing, what's this? Oh, cell phone models, same kind of thing, blah, blah, blah. We don't have time for all this. I want to do one that's more interesting, which is, I think, is it this one? Yeah. So I'm skipping a bunch of these. Let's do this one. This is a good one. So here's, I always like the security company one. So uh, here's the security. Remember we looked at this one last time too? The, two, the security company that was stealing from the parking meters? Right, remember that? And how they could be found out by statistics? So now, last time we found that the average was different. Right? So they have different, you know, the city of New York or whatever has different companies collect the money from their parking meters. And one of the companies... Um, was getting a different average amount consistently. That's how we knew they were stealing. Here's another way we could do it. We could calculate variation. And specifically, we're going to calculate <coughs> the coefficient of variation. So let's do it. So let's, um, let's start with, they want the coefficient of variation collected by the security service company. So the security service company that would be this top row of numbers. So if you have the TI, let's put those in our calculator. Put that in list one. And you can put the other numbers in list two. Yeah, you can do them both at the same time. Remember how we learned to do that? Put one group in L1, one group of numbers in L2. So let's do that. I'm coming up with a standard... My, my S is coming out, um, what is it, uh, 0 0.149, y'all getting that, yeah. 0 0.149 for the S, now that's not, we're not done yet, we got to do one more thing to get this percentage they want, everybody good to there so far? Yeah. I got a question. Okay, on the calculator, when you're calculating them, on the list, it says list L1 and A1, frequency list, and calculate. How would you just calculate them separately so they don't calculate with each other? Or yeah, so I, so I put, I um, wish there was a way I could put this on the big screen, but I put all this whole top list in L1. Right. And the bottom list in L2. Yeah, so, and then, yeah, good question. So then how do you actually do that? Um, yes, okay there, the 1.149? Now what they want you to do, I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to come, I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say, okay, so S equals 0.149. Notice your X bar. Well, here. The X bar, what's that? Oh, it's off my screen. I'm getting point, uh, 1.57. Did y'all get that? 1.57. Okay, here's what they want you to do. When they say, are y'all with me? We're doing something new here. Y'all with me on this? So from the TI, if you have the S and the X bar, I'm just doing list one right now, just the top list. How you figure out what's called the coefficient of variation is you take 
the S number, so co, I don't know if I can write very good here, coefficient of <laughs> variation, what it equals, equals, is the S over the X bar, and then, um, and then change to percent. So just take S and divide it by X bar. So take 0.149 divided by 1.57, and I'm getting 0.0949, right? And then they want you to change that to a percentage. So you know how to change the percentage, right? You just move it two places, put on a percent. So it's 9.49%. That's the answer here, 9.49%. Does that make sense? I want to explain what it is, give you a feel for it, too. But first off, are you okay with just getting it? So the coefficient of variation, what they're asking for, is S divided standard deviation over average, S over X bar. So 0.149 divided by 1.57 is 0.0949, and then change it to they want a percentage, right? That means move the decimal two places. That's why there are two zeros in the percent symbol, right? Move the decimal two places. So are we getting that okay? 9.49%. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that? What is that? That's S divided by X bar. In other words, that's the percentage that, that the standard deviation is of the average. So in other words, it, it's like if I said, okay, what, what, it, it's, it's the part S is of X bar, so it's, it says that the, the security company is typically off 9.49% off the average. It's a percentage of being off the average. I don't know if I'm making this very clear at all. Um, let, me, let me try another way of saying this. So, you jump to the end here. If I, was, if I was to say that the average shoe size, go back to shoe size, was 9, right? Average min shoe size was 9, and the standard deviation was 2. Remember how we talked about that? And we said, you know, I just made up a for, a what, a, you know, a for instance and said, okay, maybe the average men's shoe size is 9, but not everybody's average. Some are bigger and some are smaller. How far are they off the, off the average typically? Off by 2. Shoe sizes. So, so, right, that's what standard, so you, so you got set in your mind what standard deviation means? Typical amount off the middle. Standard deviation. So then coefficient of variation is going to be the standard deviation divided by the average. X bar means average. So it would be the 2 over the 9. So what would that be? That would be 0.22222. Change that to percentage, 22.2%. What that means is the average man is off or is off of the middle by 22.2%. It's the part that S is of X bar. It's the part the standard deviation is of the average. Is that helping at all? I just keep trying to say it in different ways. So in other words, not, let me say it this way. Not every man has an average shoe size. Right. So how far off the average are most people? About 22%. People are off the middle. Their, their feet are 22% bigger or 22% smaller than the average person. That's what that is. It's the typical amount people are off the middle as a, as a percentage. All right. Well, we'll keep saying that over time. Hopefully it'll make more sense as we go. So getting back to it then. So how do we calculate? So we got 9.49%. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Can we do the L2 calculation? Mm -hmm. Want to try that? So I'm going to do it on my calculator as well. Let's make sure. I'll write it up, and then I'll bounce around and see if I can be of any help for those having some trouble with it. So, um, so this is where you got to do this. The L2. I'm getting... Oops, there's the wrong thing there. S is, yeah, 1.43. Oh, 
I'll, I'll do one more decimal. 1.433, yeah. One point. No, no, point 1.433. I'm getting off here. Point 1.433, we good there? And the X bar is, is 1.75. All right, so then how do we do this coefficient thing? This will equal... This will equal... The remember it is S over X bar. <clears throat> it's point one four three three S over X bar one point seven five. So point one four three three divided by one point seven five. And then change it to a percentage. I'm getting eight point do they want two places? Yeah, 8.19. Like the times yeah, that's how you change it to a percentage. That's another way of saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right, because that moves it two places to the right. You can either say move it two places to the right, the decimal, or you can say times it by 100. Those, those both do the same thing. So two ways to say the same thing. So 8.19%. All right, so let me let me bounce. Um, yeah, so so this this should have been rounded to nine point five. I didn't read the fine print, and this should have been rounded to eight point two. We good on that? Yeah. There's more variation. This is more than one percent higher. So when it comes, yes, there is right here. Yes, there is significant difference in the variation. More than 1% difference. That's another indication that there's something funny going on there. All right, yeah, did we answer all the questions? I guess we did on that one. So questions I can answer, we good? Yeah. Let's go back here real quick. Brian, straighten me out. Where are we? Where was the one? Where was the one I was doing by hand? There. Okay. Yeah, when I did it right here, um, oh, yeah, it... it I don't know if I'm clear. All right, let's try. How about this one? No, no, that's not. That's number two. Let's do this one. There we go. Okay, here's a here's a good example, real life. They're trying to figure out which one's better. If the bank, if the bank has one big long line, and then you just go up to whatever teller's available, teller window's available, or if you have individual lines in front of each each uh, teller window, how will that? serve the customers differently. See the question? This is the kind of things that are analyzed with statistics by people that are in charge of businesses. They, so which one's going to do a better job? One of the ways, one of the things you don't want is a lot of variation, right? You don't, you understand what I mean by that? You don't want customers up there thinking, you know, I got in one line and that guy or gal was so slow, I waited three times as long as the person who got in the other line. That's when customers get mad. Don't they? So you don't want a lot of variation. You want the customers want to feel like they're being treated fairly, being treated equally. So, so one of the things you measure statistically in the two different plans is variation. Is there more variation? You don't want that. You want consistency. You don't want highs and lows. People start feeling like they're being treated unfairly. So let's take. So here's the waiting times for customers. In the single, and how many minutes it took them before they were up to the window. And here's the waiting time when they made individual lines at each window. So let's go ahead and take each of those, put them into L1 and L2, and let's calculate, let's find the S and the X bar and calculate the coefficients of variation. I'm going to use it after the class, so don't, don't spend a lot of money on it. All right, so for the first list, I got S. This. Now, how many places? We need one decimal in the end, right? One decimal at the end. So I'm going to use like three along the way. So point four six seven, And the X bar, I'm getting um, 7.15. That's, that's all the accuracy it gave me. 7.15. So, so therefore, this thing is 0.467 over x bar, 7.15. Just divide it on your calculator and then just change it 
to a percentage. Move the decimal two places. I'm getting, yeah, and then I got 0 0.0653, and then move the decimal two places. So 6.5%. 6.5, we good there? So that means there's 6.5 is the average percentage variation. Yeah, I was probably saying it in too confusing of a way. That means there's 6.5% variation going on in that line waiting time. Customers waiting in, in the single line format vary. Like some people go shorter time. I don't, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm, I'm probably a hurry or I, I walk fast, probably faster than most people. And when I come to like, especially like Costco or something, you're looking at the lines, I, I like scheme for a minute, you know, and I watch, I don't even watch how fast the people are checking. I'm, yeah, 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 you watch out anyway. And so I, I mean, you know, so I don't, but maybe I'm just too type A that way. But I want, I want out the door as soon as I possibly can. And so, so variation, that means how much percentage is varying from line to line. So, so from person to person, there's a variation of about 6.5%. That's, that's how much variation there is. Some people go shorter, some go longer. It's not a lot. So then how about for the second one? So the second one, I haven't done that one yet. So I already got the numbers, huh? All right. Man, you guys know how to get the second list, right? Mm -hmm. It's second two. And so, yeah, for the second list, I'm getting S equals, yeah, one point, yeah, 1.811. And x bar is 7.14 again. Oh, that's a little different. Okay, anyway, so then we take 1.811 divided by 7.14. I'm getting 0.2536. Move the decimal two places. 25.4%. That's a lot of variation. Twenty-five point four percent. Do you guys see how I did that? Sorry, my writing is all bad. There. Is that good? Is that coming out? Are we okay with that? You guys getting those numbers? I have a question. Yeah. Oh, final question. Um, is there a difference in variation? Yeah, whopping. So, um, so bank A was the first answer and bank B was the second. Um, the waiting times in A have considerably less variation. Yeah, so, that, so A is a way better plan. One big single line is way less variation. That's a better plan. That makes sense, huh? There'd be less waiting, less variation in one big line because everybody's feeding to all the windows instead of a fast teller, slow teller kind of thing. All right, let's move on. We're about done. This, um, oh, no, we have to do this. That's right. Okay, so certain group uh, test subjects uh, had pulse rates mean 74.5. So that's the average pulse rate for this group. Standard deviation 11.8. Use the range rule of thumb to identify, identify the limits separating values that are significantly low or significantly high. Remember what we taught? That's the 95%. Two jumps above the middle, two jumps. So that's like the uh, below the middle. That's like the shoe size, right? I said min shoe size average nine. Add two, add two, subtract two, subtract two. That's where you're going to find 95% of all men within two standard deviation jumps above and below the middle. That's what they want me to do here, except it's pulse rates. So 70, um, move that a little bit. There we go. 74.5 is the mean, so that's the middle, 74.5, that's the middle, and the standard deviation, the typical amount, people are off the middle, is 11.8, so you add 11.8, is it the low ones for subtraction? and add 11.8, um, oh yeah, yeah, and then I'll, yeah, I should have, yeah, you're right, I'm doing this one on accident, huh, so yeah, let me make that subtraction, you're right, yeah, subtract, so yeah, the low one would be subtraction, exactly. So subtract 11.28 twice, I mean 11.8 twice, I'm saying a lot of wrong numbers tonight, 11.8 twice, or you can just go times two, 
on the 11.8. Same thing. And you get 50.9. So that's going to be... Come on. That's going to be a significantly low. Remember, when you're two standard amounts, you're way low, aren't you? You're more than just the standard amount low. You're doubly low. You're really low. You're significantly low. And then for the high, you add 11.8 and add 11.8. And I'm getting 98.1. So people with a heart rate above 98.1, that's significantly high. Below 50.9, significantly low. So 118.1, is that significantly high or low? Yeah, significantly high. It's above 98.1. Is that good how to do that? Just add, just subtract the standard amount twice, add the standard amount twice. That's the 95% of all people for anything bell-shaped, which is almost everything. I'll move on if you're good with that. Next question. Group of adult males, what number is this? Number eight. Group of adult males has foot length. Same thing. I'm going to skip it. Moving on. Number nine. <clears throat> All right, blood, platelet counts, group of women, bell-shaped curve, distribution, mean, 254.4, standard deviation, 68.1. So um, what is the approximate percentage of women within one standard deviation of the mean? Oh, they're asking one. One standard deviation, Okay. Yeah, okay. So within one standard deviation of the mean, that's, does anybody remember? 68. Yeah, that's the 68%. If you go back to the bell curve, I didn't know they were going to ask this. Here, yeah, you see the bell curve there, which I've scribbled all over? <laughs> see how the bell curve, if we uh, put the bell curve right here, so here's the middle. Here's one jump to the right of the middle and one jump to the left. See how, see how that's 34 and 34? 68% one jump above and one jump below. Oh, it says it right here. I should look right there, huh? 68%. <laughs> one above and one below. So that's what they're looking for. Go back to this question. So they say, within one standard. That means within one, up one, down one, 68. The next question, they say, how many, what percentage of women go between 118 and 390.6? You know where they're probably getting those numbers? That's probably two jumps below. I would, I would just type 95 and hit enter, hope for the best. I can show you if it's right, though, for sure, by the following. Right? Just do, do the calculation we've been doing. Take the mean, take the middle. 254.4, subtract the standard, 68.1, subtract that twice, and I bet you get 118.2, don't you? Yeah. yeah, so they just basically took the middle, went two jumps down, I bet this high number, they went two jumps up, which means you're going to get 95% of the data. So do you see how the percentages are always the same, even though you're measuring all kinds of different things, I mean, shoe sizes... Um, IQ scores, blood, whatever, platelet counts. The percentages are the same. The other numbers are different, aren't they? Making sense? Because most things are average. Shoe size, blood count, IQ, pulse rate. There's average, and then there's around that. All right, I'm going to move on if you're okay. Number 10, same thing. Let's skip on 